Y'all, so you see here, we got my iPhone 12 Pro, right? But on the front, on my home screen, I'm running Android. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how I got this set up, plus some other cool tips and tricks that you're not gonna wanna miss. So stay tuned, y'all. Let's get into it. Now, before I give you the details on how to do this, I first have to give a big thank you to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. So yeah, y'all, this blew my mind right here. I just thought this was super genius. So basically, what this is, is like an app that you can install on your phone. I guess that's the best way to call it. Now, I do wanna point out, this is not going to replace your iPhone home screen. But either way, it gives you a demo of a Samsung Galaxy experience on your iPhone. So you can open up the phone app, and you can actually you know, press numbers and see what that interface looks like. You can even go into your messages app. Now, it's not gonna let you create a new message, but you know, you can respond to the pre-existing conversations in there to just kind of see how it looks. Then you also have the camera app here. This is gonna let you actually go through the camera interface to basically see what it's like on a Samsung Galaxy device in reference to the interface that you have and the options and it tells you more information about it. So this guy's kind of walking you through it. So you can get a kind of feel for that. And then on top of that, you can hop into the settings. You got your notification panel within here as well. You can even go into the Galaxy themes and change the theme that you have for your home screen here. And it's super quick too. So like I can choose this one here, hit apply, and within seconds, it is now my home screen. Like this was a genius move from Samsung, especially for anybody that has grown tired of, you know, their iPhone, or they're just curious, what is it like to use a Galaxy device? Oh, hold up, I got a phone call. Wait a minute, I don't. Hey, it's Sin. We just wanted to give you a quick call to say thanks for checking out the experience. Many iPhone users think Android will be too different to what they're used to, but hopefully you found it intuitive and fun to use. And who knows, maybe we'll see you on the other side. She didn't have to hang up like that though. That was that was very rude. So, I mean, come on, you're, you're trying to recruit me, right? You, you gotta have a proper goodbye. Now, the way you go about getting this on your phone. So the first thing you're gonna do is head over to the website, itest.nz. And then once you're here, you're gonna hit the share button and then you're going to select add to home screen. And then you can rename it if you want, but I'm gonna leave it the same, hit add. And now it's right here on my home screen so I can just tap on it and go through the setup process here, which only takes a couple of seconds. And voila, I am now running <laughs> my you know Galaxy interface on an iPhone. So I think this is super cool, one, for you to get that experience, and then two, to fool with your friends, go ahead and spoof them because they're probably not gonna know. You're gonna school them real quick and tech them out. Now, a lot of these tips and tricks in which I'm showing you are gonna be related to iOS 14.5, so please make sure that you're updated to the latest software version because these are some cool things that I discovered in updating my phone that came along with it. And if you happen to be new here, first of all, welcome. I go by Tech Me Out, and on my channel, I like to talk about pretty much everything in relation to technology. So if that is something that you're interested in as well, you can feel free to hit that subscribe button and that like button if you feel inclined to. Now something else that is new with iOS 14.5 is the ability to unlock your iPhone while wearing a face mask. And this is done in conjunction with the Apple Watch. So I think you need an Apple Watch 3 or later, but ultimately to get it going, we're gonna head into the settings on your phone. And while you're in there, we're gonna go to Face ID and Passcode. And then we're gonna navigate down to Unlock with Apple Watch, and we're gonna turn that on. And you're gonna get a prompt that explains basically what you're enabling, but I'm gonna hit Turn On there. And then now I'm gonna put on my face mask. So basically how it works is while I'm wearing my face mask here, when my phone and my watch are near each other and I raise my phone to wake it, my watch will give me an alert that says it is unlocking my iPhone. And from there I can just swipe up as normal. Or if I don't wanna get into my phone and I wanna lock it, I can just choose lock iPhone on my Apple Watch and it'll go ahead and lock my phone. And that's it, basically that's how it works. Something else that is new with iOS 14.5, the option to change the skin tone for your emoji couples. So you weren't able to do that up until iOS 14.5, so now we can get that diversity and representation of interracial couples. So when you press and hold here, you'll see now that you can come in and actually choose the ethnicity per emoji person. So I'm gonna say one is black. So now I can tap on that and it's selected and it's also changed the default emoji to be that so I don't have to keep doing that every single time. Now it's 
speaking of couples and inclusion, I'm happy to say Storyblocks is making strides in this area as well, as they're working to respond to many users' requests for diversity and representation with their restock initiative. Now, if you're not familiar with Storyblocks, they basically offer a royalty-free, demand-driven library full of stock assets like exclusive sound effects, title screens, and even social media templates. Now, I've been partnering with them over the past few months to further enhance my videos. However, this month, they are spreading awareness in another way through restock. Now, as you may know, a lot of stock footage does not factor in diversity, and it's overwhelmingly white, with only about 5% of that footage containing non-white models. So what Storyblocks is doing is hiring filmmakers from underrepresented groups in stock to create collections for their library in order to change that. Now, Storyblocks' first round of collections focused on capturing the layered experiences of VIPOC communities, and they've committed to 20% of their stock footage with people to include Black, Indigenous, and people of color by 2022. And these steps of inclusion are only the beginning. On May 17th, they're releasing a new round of collections called Queer Spaces and Faces from six LGBTQIA filmmakers, each creating a collection of 50 video clips exclusively for their library. And like I said, I'm personally happy to hear and see this because I do feel like both of these communities in which I'm a part of are not highlighted enough in stock media and we should be. So definitely be sure to check it out. And of course I got you covered with it because down below in the description box is a link that you can follow if you want to find out more information regarding this initiative in which you can check out and hopefully enjoy. Now, while we're still on the subject of emojis, we do now also have over 200 new emojis to enjoy. So I put a couple of new ones here within my notes app, but you know, if you wanna find them, you can just tap the emoji symbol here and then search for the emoji in which you want. So the first emoji I have is a mending heart. I also have a burning heart. Apple also changed the syringe so that it looks a little bit different now before it had like a green solution in it, but now it has a clear solution. And then we have our AirPods Max, which are labeled as headphones. You can't change the color of them, but if you search for headphones, they'll pop up. <laughs> there we go, boom. Then we also have the emoji face with a cloud around it. And then we also have the emoji with the spiral eyes. Now another thing to check out is that you have new Siri voices. So originally we had two, now we have four. Now the way we're gonna access that is we're gonna head into your settings and we're going to search for Siri and search. And then we're gonna to navigate to Siri voice. Voice two and three under the American section are the two new voices. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. I like voice too, so that's the one I'm gonna personally stick with. <laughs> Now something else that's new is the option to answer or decline calls using your voice when wearing compatible headphones like the new AirPods Max or the AirPods second gen or later and specific Beats headphones. So in the past you would have to say, you know, hey, and then say answer or decline, but now you can just say answer or decline while the phone is ringing and it'll do so. Now moving right on along, another new feature that we have is the option to have like an overlay screen when you're typing to Siri, because in the past it would dominate the entire screen, but now it's going to share the screen with whatever you have up there. So the first thing you have to do is turn this option on. And the way you're gonna do that is to go into your settings and then you're gonna search for type to Siri. And it should pull up within your accessibility options. And so we're gonna to toggle that on. So now when we press and hold to summon Siri, you can just type in your question here and say, what is the weather in New York? Boom. Um, but once we turn that off, then we can press on the button and it'll pull up Siri as normal instead of pulling up a screen in which you can type to her. Now, Apple Music, it did also get some new features as well. And one in particular that I absolutely love, which is the option to share your lyrics. So let's say for instance, I'm listening to a song here, I'm really enjoying the lyrics and I wanna share it with someone. I can press on the lyric button here in the bottom left, and then I can press and hold on the lyric in which I want to share. And you can select up to 150 characters, but you're just gonna tap on the lines that you want. But as you can see, I've already maxed out after tapping on these two. So let's say for instance, we chose the message option. So when the person receives this, it's gonna pick up playing the song from that area in which you select it. So now let's say I chose to share a song instead to Instagram. I can long press, choose my lyrics, and then choose Instagram. So the beautiful thing about sharing it to Instagram like this is that you can put people right where you want them at in the song. So then your friends can just go here at the very top and hit play on Apple Music, open Apple Music, and it takes them straight to the song so they can enjoy it. 
Oh, what you doing? What you doing? Where you at? Where you at? You got plans? Oh, don't say that. Now, another new thing within the music app is found in your library section, and that's the Made For You playlist. So it has all of your Made For You playlists combined right in here. So in order to see this, you do have to first save one. But once you've done that, they'll all be right within here. And if you currently do not see Made For You, all you have to do is hit edit and then make sure that it's checked right here. So if I decide, hey, I don't want it anymore, I can just deselect it like so and then add it back like that. Now something else though that I really like, it's not new, but it's very useful. <laughs> and that's the option to adjust the way your playlists are being sorted by, by choosing sort up here in the top right. I know it seems kind of self-explanatory, but I just really want to point it out because it helps me, especially when I want to look at certain playlists based upon certain criteria in that moment. So maybe if I added a song recently to a specific playlist, then I want to see the playlist that I've most recently added music to without having to scroll or if I want to see which playlist that I've recently played, I can do that. Now something else new within the music app is to see the full entire release date for an album. So now you can see the month, date, and the year in which the album was released. So this is going to be really useful if you want to search for different albums released by your favorite record labels, or if you have a record label that you really like and you just kind of want to discover new music, this could be a good way to do so. We also have the scrolling metadata back to the lock screen so when the music has a long title or long information, instead of it being stagnant on the lock screen, it'll actually let it scroll so that you can see the rest of the information. Now this next new feature is one one that I'm just so grateful for because it just seems so intuitive, like it should have been there. And that's the option to have gestures for the songs in which you see in a playlist. So if you swipe to the right here, you have two options, one to let you play the song last and the other to let you play it next. Whereas a long swipe is going to go ahead and add it instantly to play next. Or if you swipe in from the right here, it lets you tap the plus symbol to add it to your library. And then if you come back to it again and swipe, it's gonna let you delete it. And if you do a long swipe, then it's just gonna go ahead and instantly add it to your library. And if you take a look next to those three dots, you'll see that we have a new icon. It basically signifies if the song has been downloaded or not to your library. So when it's in your library, you're gonna see this icon here with the down arrow. And if it's not in your library, it's gonna look like this. You won't see that symbol to the left of those three dots. And another interface feature that's different is the ability to now have an animated artist page profile because I think it just makes things look that much better. Now, if we move things over to the podcast app, we'll also see some new changes in there. For one, you can swipe right to mark an episode as played or unplayed, or you can swipe left like this to remove a download or saved podcast episode. And when you tap on an individual episode, instead of just instantly playing it, it will take you to the details page for that particular episode. And now, instead of subscribing to a podcast, you can follow a podcast. And that's probably largely to do with Apple now coming out with subscriptions for podcasts. If you navigate to the search page here, you can actually browse different categories to find a podcast. And this is nice, especially if you're new to podcasts or you're just trying to discover a new podcast. Now, if you've been following my tips and tricks videos, then you know how I feel about shortcuts. I like to implement those into the video somehow, some way. And now we have two new options to play with. One in particular is the screenshot action and I was actually trying to think of like a way in which I could use this shortcut. I sat for a minute y'all just just brainstorming different ways that this shortcut could be useful and I was drawing blanks so as much as I wanted to not only tell you about it but show you how you could use it I'm sorry I'm gonna need your help on this one y'all let me know down below in the comment section different ways in which you could think of that would be useful to use the screenshot action within a shortcut. What would you want your phone to basically automatically do and taking a screenshot, I guess, is the question. The second new action that we have is to set the orientation lock. Oh, no, no, we got three, I'm sorry, I said two. My bad, we got three. The third one is to set voice and data mode. Now something else that is new and what you can do is sort the items in your reminders list. So in the past, you were only able to do this manually, but now when you're viewing a list, you can tap the three dots in the top right and then select sort by and then choose the specific criteria. And then as you change one element, you'll see that you can get more options for that beneath it. And if you've ever had a desire to print your reminders list, you can do that now as well. Now this next one is one in which I really appreciate from Apple and that is app tracking transparency. So basically now when you open an application, 
Apple will ask you if you give this app permission to track you across other applications. But ultimately, this is how you can have a little bit more finer control on how apps track your data. Because they will track your email address, your name, your advertising identifier, or other data that might be provided by you. And this information is basically used for ad targeting, but it also can be shared with data brokers. But if you find that, hey, you want to reverse whatever you chose initially, there's a way in which you can go about doing so, and that's to head into your settings. But you can come in here and turn this off if you know that you don't want any apps to track your data, or you can come down here and specifically choose which apps can and cannot track your data. Now, if you've been eyeing my widget on my home screen setup, I have a video in the works for that, y'all. It's coming very, very soon. I know in a prior video, I asked you all about, you know, if you wanted to learn the app that I was using, which is called Widgy, and how you can get your phone to look like that and all that good stuff. You all definitely let me know in the comment section you're interested, so it is in the works, and I hope and aim to get it out this week, so stay tuned. But yeah, y'all, that's pretty much it for this particular video. I just kind of wanted to run through some of the new things that I was enjoying with the iOS 14.5 update that I felt was worth mentioning. This is not everything that was included within the update. So there's still some things to unpack, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna check out some of my other tips and tricks videos, I'll throw them on screen now, as well as link them down below in the description box. But until the next one, y'all, as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.